Hello and welcome back to another episode of Finn on the Road. Uh, today I'm coming at you from the city of Milan, Italy, and I have an extra special guest here with me today. Uh, she's only going to be here for 10 days, and I thank this woman for, well, bringing me my life, and then also for bringing me my backpack, which is lost, and I'm very thankful. My mom. Hey there. So she's joining me for the next uh, 10 days. We're going to be in Milan and heading to Varese uh, to watch my younger brother uh, race. So he's on the Team Canada U23 national rowing team. Uh, so he's going to be racing in Varese over like I think two or three times. We don't have this schedule exactly yet over the next 10 days. So I'll have, um, we'll have some video of him racing and then us going to Varese and maybe checking out Lake Como and stuff too. But today we're in Milan and we're doing a bit of a like a huge city uh, trip or a tour today. So we're checking out the Duomo Cathedral, uh, Sforza Castle, probably getting some pizza or pasta for lunch. Don't know just yet. And uh, yeah, whatever else we get to see. So come along. First stop is Sforza Castle or a Vodafone or something where I can get a SIM card because currently we're, we're traveling without any internet connection and Wi-Fi around here is a little spotty. So we'll catch up with you in a sec. So as I'm sure that a lot of my uh, European viewers are aware of, there's kind of this heat wave going on. Uh, and especially in Europe, it is hot. Very, very hot here right now. I think it's like 30, 31 degrees Celsius now. But yesterday it was 34 here in Milan and it felt like 38 degrees. It's just a different kind of heat. Like I had a lot of really hot days and hot nights uh, in Morocco, but it was more bearable there. I think one, because I'm expecting it to be hot. And then two, because the all the buildings, the infrastructures are built around a, a pretty hot climate, not all year round, but like for the majority of the year. Whereas here in Milan, this kind of heat for this long extended period of time is definitely abnormal. And you can see, looking at the trees, look at that they're all dry and the leaves are dying and the grass is all yellowing and brown. I don't think they've had rain at all for, for too long, for a long time. So hopefully they get some rain soon and this heat kind of subsides because uh, you can definitely see the city is suffering a little bit for it. Not just here, everywhere. Just goes to show global warming is no joke. Being back in Italy after a couple of months, just a quick little reminder how much I love Italian architecture. I'm really uh, excited, looking forward to seeing the Duomo Cathedral too. It's a famous, famous building and at least pictures that I've seen it look beautiful. Okay, there is Arco di Pace. I'm pretty sure that means Pete's, uh, Peace Arch. Uh, in Italian. Uh, any Italian viewers, please let me know if that's true or not. Our first little stop on our historical tour of Milan. It's super nice. I love the statues on the top. Um, and then if you look down the center of it too, that is Sforza Castle or part of Sforza Castle right down the center. So we're going to be walking that way and there's my mom. Say hello to the camera. So. I was looking up at the statues here, the carvings in the side um, of this arch, and it's obviously beautiful. I mean, just look at the ceiling there and those statues. And I didn't even notice at first. Uh, my mom pointed out that you might be able to see, like check up right around that statue or the, the carving of the chariot. There's some netting there, uh, just in case some of that, like the stones get loose and they fall. One last view of the arch from the other side on this beautiful blue sky, hot day. And now, Heading to Sforza Castle. Okay, so finally I found this little uh, information plaque here and I did get it right, Arch of Peace, that's what I thought. Anyways, um, so you can read this if you like, but to sum it up, um, it was built in 18, or started to be built in 1807 by um, designer and architect Luigi Cainola um, and it wasn't completed until 31 years later in 1838. It was originally meant um, as a, it was meant to be a victory arch to celebrate uh, Napoleon's victory in Europe. And then they later changed the name to uh, the Arch of Peace. As it says on this plaque here, I'm not, I don't have all this prior knowledge, but it, uh, it marks the end of like a really bloody uh, period of wars, like during Napoleonic uh, Europe. Lots of, lots of battles, lots of bloodshed, uh, lots of killing. And since that ended, they named it Arch of Peace. Yeah, so we're entering the center of the park. There's the arch, there's the castle. We've got some water, uh, much needed. In hindsight, I probably should have brought my day pack and uh, brought a big bottle of water, but uh, I, long story short, I didn't. So we're gonna have to buy some bottles of water. This is only a euro, so you know, it's really not that bad. And it's important to stay hydrated, folks, especially in heat like this. It's uh, the longer that we're out, the hotter it gets. 
our first looks at the Castello Sforzesco. We're gonna get some more information on this castle when we get inside. Look at the size of this moat too. It's all made out of brick. It looks a little different from uh, like a lot of other castles that I've seen. Normally, it, most of the castles have these big stone bricks like this, but not like red brick. I don't know, I wonder how old this is. I guess that's for us to find out once you get inside and do a little tour. So here's what the inside of the castle looks like. It's all pretty cool. I would love to get up there, but unfortunately, should have looked this up before, but it's closed Mondays. Um, it seems like a lot of things are closed on Mondays here. Um, definitely not the Duomo, so we're gonna go check out the Duomo for sure. And then um, later this week, I think on Friday, we'll probably come back here and do a proper tour of this castle because it looks really, really cool. And I mean, there's museums and like, art and other stuff, <laughs> lots of stuff to see. So we'll definitely be back on Friday and get to see it in all of its true glory. Fast forward a couple of days, as you can see by my outfit change. Um, and today we're actually gonna go and see the Sforzesca castle. I'm gonna add this into the video and then you can continue watching where I left off, where we're going to the Duomo. First of all though, we're taking the train, or the tram should I say. Here it is. Oh, that was a, a long stop. I thought they were gonna miss us. Okay, here. okay hop on, mom. Okay, we made it on the tram. kind of cool. It feels a little old, a little antique. We're kind of bumbling around here. Okay, we're, we're stopped now, but it's like you can buy the tickets anywhere. Um, well, not anywhere, but at the train stations and supposedly at some kiosks. We didn't find any kiosks, but train stations and hop on the tram. It's like two euros, I think. We're taking this to the castle, uh, which I showed a little bit earlier in the video, but this time we're actually going to do a tour and see the inside. First, camera outside. reach the castle from a slightly different perspective from the other day. Here it is. Slightly overgrown. This goes to show how old this castle is, how it stood the test of time, battle against nature, man versus nature. Some English teachers might say there's some comparisons to be made there, uh, but I'm no English teacher and it was never a favorite subject of mine. So don't ask me about that. Reminds me of Assassin's Creed. Just climb up some of these buildings, do a little jump into a pile of hay. I haven't played one of those games in a long time. All right, that's enough out of me. Let's go check this out. Make your shot, you're on camera, so you better not miss. Hey, nice work. Here it is. It's gonna go on the top one, ready? Nice. Well, that museum was very interesting. Lots of cool art, awesome sculptures, ancient relics. Well, not ancient, but you know, medieval relics. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to film with my, uh, my GoPro in there. It was bright. So I just snuck my phone out, which was allowed. I think they just didn't want me talking to the camera out loud. I'm probably just gonna overlay that with some music, which you would have seen by now, I guess. Now that a scary looking pigeon. Yikes. And now we're heading to the, uh, what's it called? The Last Supper at the Piat or the church of- Santa Maria. Santa Maria Grazi. Well, we're getting one last good look at the church and a huge line of people. Because unfortunately, 
tickets are all sold out until the end of August, which uh, we didn't know about. We thought maybe, you know, one sec, come on here. We thought maybe worst case scenario, they'd be sold out for today. We could buy a ticket for Sunday. You know, it's currently Thursday. Thought, yeah, that'll probably be it. We didn't think like you'd have to book it a month in advance. And honestly, like, we weren't even sure. I wasn't even sure if I'd be coming here or not a month ago. Um, neither did mom. So we're not going to see it, but we can just look it up on Google Images and <laughs> Yeah, it's a. Yeah. So. Go to the canal area, and then I'll hand you back to Pass Finn to finish the day and check out the Duomo, which is what this whole, you know, this whole video is actually all about. It's the Duomo. Remember, we did that the other day. This is the Navigli district. Got some little canals through here, and I guess yeah, people are running some kayaks, some paddle boards, little places to get some aperitifs around here. Um, we're just gonna hang out here and then I think probably head back. Okay, that's pretty much it for today. So I'm gonna flash back to a couple days ago and hand you back to past Finn. Here you go, Finn. You can just see down there the Duomo SIM card secured. It was a little pricier than we would have imagined. Uh, paid 35 euros for it. Mom um, did. Mom did. <laughs> eh, thanks. Well, I, I gave you five euros, so my mom, mom did pay for it, but. We, we didn't know this when we bought it, but it came with a, um, a power bank too, which is something that I realistically should have bought before I even left on this trip, but I didn't. And I've just been making do without a power bank, but now we got a, a free power bank too. So, well, free plus 35 euro uh, SIM card purchase. So we have that. I should be able to keep my GoPro nice and charged throughout the whole day. And here is the Duomo, very famous. And we're even being serenaded by a little guitarist over there. How nice. Hey, we're in this little uh, restaurant called Obiko. You know what's called? Obika? Ibika. Ibi Obika? So big. <laughs> Mozzarella bar. Uh, oh yeah, it's, it says right there, Obika mozzarella bar. Um, so we got the mozzarella. <laughs> we got two Aperol spritzes, which haven't arrived yet. I'll make sure to get some all that on camera as well. We got burrata, we got mozzarella. We got the, uh, I think it's called the mozzarella experience. Oh, and here are our Aperol spritzes. So we're looking forward to this. And we're, we could sit outside and have a view of the Duomo, but we decided to sit inside. And it's a little hot to sit outside, so here, we go. Here's mother taking a picture. Cheers, this with me, mom. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. I tried the Aperol spritz. I've had them before, obviously, but. It's very strong. Yeah, it's. Am it's... I gonna be able to walk around? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, they're a little strong. And we haven't eaten too much today, so we might be uh, kind of stumbling around the Duomo after this. They're surprisingly strong. Really good, really orangey, refreshing. It's nice sitting down. Do you feel better? Yeah, I feel a lot better sitting down. It's hot, really, really hot out. Oh man, our food has arrived. So we got the burrata, smoked mozzarella, prosciutto, salami, sun-dried tomatoes, like a little tomato salad on bread, roasted red pepper hummus, I think, yeah. Ooh, really good. And some flatbread, some bread, obviously our Aperol spritz. We're gonna eat all this. And I'll give a quick little review after, or maybe in the middle. Quick little mid-meal food review. Um, it's delicious. <laughs> Honestly, I think the my favorite part might be the hummus. The hummus is very tasty. Red pepper hummus. The salami is my favorite of the meats, so I have it on this piece of bread with the burrata. The smoked mozzarella was good, but like the mozzarella that we bought was better, I think. Not super flavorful, but it's like really fresh tasting and it's good. And then the burrata is obviously really tasty, so I'm gonna try this out for you guys on camera. Perfect. Okay, now that I finished chewing, I can give a proper review. It was delicious. That's all I have to say. <laughs> the salami is really good and salty. The burrata is creamy and cold and soft. Um, very fresh flavor. Not a whole, it's not salty. Not really like a whole ton of like real flavor to it. But I think kind of the magic of the burrata is the fact that you can spread it and you cut it open. There's a big surprise. Like, ooh, you know, it's all soft on the inside and spills out. Um, but it, it is really good. I think it's meant to, to kind of complement other flavors too, right? But 
It's, I think it's very tasty. Burrata is definitely better than the mozzarella that we had. Okay, here's the ticket, thank you. We entered this Momo, and we're going up the stairs to the rooftop first, which was actually a really smart decision. We didn't know it would be like this. Um, but the line for getting to the roof, it's like maybe 10 people in front of us, and the line to enter the cathedral uh, from the front was there was always, what, 100 people on probably? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, or more. We would have been waiting in line for probably 20 or 30 minutes. And then it turns out we can actually go into the cathedral, like from the, like there's an access from the rooftop. So we ended up not having to wait for too long in line. Well, we made it to the rooftops. And just look at this. Stunning. Whew. It's hot. And there's a bit of a hike up those stairs too. But well worth it for this. You know, again, kind of a shame that there's some construction going on, but necessary for a church that's this, that's this old. Look at that. Incredible. We were just having lunch right over in there. I guess there's not really anyone sitting outside. It's such a hot day. See that curved tower way off in the distance uh, over, over there? That's kind of, that's where we walked from. So definitely a nice, a nice walk today. What a view. And There's the building Which one? Oh, that I told you about with the living wall. Like it's the, see the building with the pointy. Oh yeah, yeah. So the, right, right to the right. right. To, so yeah, yeah. Right to the right of it, it looks kind of green. So yeah. apparently, yeah, there's a living wall on that building. Yeah, it's all green. Lots of plants and trees on up the side of the building. That's super cool. Not as cool as this though. Okay, a couple quick facts about this Duomo. Um, it was groundbreaking began in 1386. So that's when construction began. There's a little plaque somewhere here in the church, which hopefully we'll find, and I'll get that on video. Um, and it took six centuries to complete. It was not finished in 1956. The top tower, uh, wherever it is, I'm sure that we'll find it. I think it's I think it's over there. Yeah, with the gold angel, I believe that's 40 meters tall. Um, and uh, it's actually the largest church in the entire Italian Republic. So St. Peter's Basilica, which I visited, many videos back you should go check that one out it's really good <laughs> um st peter's basilica is actually bigger but it's in vatican city so not technically in the italian republic this this one is the biggest one and honestly it might be the most like ornately designed intricately carved church that i've seen so far i mean look at all this stuff statues on each one of these um <clears throat> of these spires so many gargoyles just Incredible design, I can't imagine. I mean, 600 years of work, yeah. That's a long time to build a church. And it's just incredible. This is really cool. Not to mention, the best view that we've seen of the city so far. Wow, talk about an incredible view. I mean, I didn't know too much about this church before before coming here, but I didn't realize that we'd be able to stand like right on the, actually on the roof proper. I thought there'd be like a rooftop tour taking you around the spires down on either side maybe, but that's such a shame about this construction. Otherwise it'd make for a perfect picture. For a church this old, it's definitely gonna take some, uh, uh, some restoration projects and they're putting a lot of money into this. It has to be done, super cool. I'm gonna get a view over here. Look at that. Let's check out the other side quickly. Awesome. Just incredible. Wow. That'll make for a great picture. Put that on Instagram. So uh, check me out on Instagram if you want to see some, some more, a bit more fit on the road uh, content. See all this new, really white stone, the marble. That's uh, all the replacement? Yeah, this is all the, uh, the replacement, all the repairs. Yeah. It looks kind of <clears throat> strange standing out against the, um, the dark and gray stuff here. This has been here for hundreds of years, but again, you know, it's gotta be done. And whoever did it did a, a, a bang up job. That's for sure. Yeah. Imagine what a must have looked like, no, I mean, back in the day, I mean, it took 600 years to build, so I'm sure there's been some staining on the stone for a long time, but when it was mostly complete and mostly still white as well, it must yeah. be like 
incredible. something else incredible. Just waiting for time travel to be invented. So I can go back and see all this stuff again in the process of the building. And head on down into the cathedral. Now this, this is something else. Wow. The last big cathedral that I was actually inside was uh, St. Peter's. And if I'm being honest, St. Peter's is probably going to be the best, most impressive one that I'll ever see. But this definitely is close. And it's the biggest one in the Italian Republic. So, I mean, I can't complain. It is incredible in here. Look at that stained glass. The detail on that. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. Being in big cathedrals like this makes you feel really small. You know? <laughs> Yeah, 600 years of work. The organs over there too. Wow. Some more stained glass. For those of you who have watched some of my earlier videos, you know I'm kind of a sucker for stained glass. That's beautiful. I like a, a bit of an elevator up so I can just get a nice view of it, but that's all right. So something that the Duomo is most famous for is all its statues. And well, we're looking at the same glass right now, but statues, busts, gargoyles. Statues all, yep. all around that yep. frame. All around the frame here, outside too, as you saw earlier. Apparently, there are 3,400 statues, 700 marble figures, and 134 uh, grotesque gargoyles. That's what the Wikipedia says. Sorry, 135 gros grotesque gargoyles. And you really have to crane your neck to see all the way to the ceiling. This organ too, super impressive. I don't know about this or organ, but the first one dates back to 1389. Um, like the first one that was here. I think it's been replaced a couple of times. But this is just huge. It's like, this organ is the size of the house. <laughs> it's, it is. it's insane. It's incredible. I'm forever going to be blown away by the size of the churches here in Europe. It's just insane how big it is. And like all these huge pillars. I mean, excuse my hand for scale. Not that this, that really helps much, but they're massive. It makes me feel like I'm walking through Moria in the Lord of the Rings. That's a, a bit of a throwback to my uh, one of my Barcelona videos where I said the same thing, but it wasn't in the church. Into the archaeological area. That's uh, Battistero San Giovanni alle Fonti down this way. Oh, they're like uncovering everything from under here. Wow, this is so cool. It smells really musty down here. So all the excavation being done here is being done very slowly and bit by bit in such a way that visitors can still have access to it. And it won't ever stop tourism, hopefully. It won't ever stop tourism. It would be cool to see some restoration in progress, like some archeologists chiseling away. That'd be super cool. Basically, all this is uh, more like a relatively uh, recent undertaking, at least in the, in the taking into perspective how long this church has been around for. But in the last, like I think they said, 200 years, um, there's been some there's some chance discoveries of little places like this and old artifacts that's led to some bigger excavations being done. And in 2012. I think that if I was reading that correctly, in 2012, a lot more people started coming here just to see this part too. And all this, I mean, these bricks that must be a thousand years old, more than a thousand years old. Um, and now this brings in a lot of tourism. It, it's nice because it's not too busy down here. And it's nice and cool as we're underground. Some of the old mosaics. Hearts. My favorite is that blue one there. See what is it? Hearts. Huh. Oh wow, that's super cool. Coins. Lots of different pieces. Coins, yes. Ring. Number 22. 22, where is that? Uh, right there, right at the top there. Oh, yeah. Anello, oro, Nico, Nicolo, is that nickel? Mm -hmm. Oro, we make gold. Oh, and then oro and Nicolo. Oh, gold and, and, and congema. Yeah. Look at this. It's almost like you're walking in the streets of ancient Rome, or at least 
maybe not ancient Rome, but Rome a thousand plus years ago. One more thing to note, if you're six foot plus, you bang your head, so be careful. Right here, I'm just, just barely okay. Kind of depends where you are. And again, that's a little better. Okay, we're in this little covered area now. On the hunt for some water. So I'm keeping my eyes peeled. We found one place back there, but the water bottles are all kind of warm, even though they're in a fridge. Uh, we need something cool, something to cool, cool us off a bit. So hopefully find something soon. That is cool. Yeah, this is impressive too. But it looks like there's a lot of Prada, Louis Vuitton, more Prada, Dior, Gucci, stuff that doesn't really interest me. One more look at the Duomo. Slight change of plan. Uh, so we decided, A, because it's hot as hell out there and because we're tired, that we're uh, calling it early. Well, it's later than we thought though it would be actually. It's almost four. It's four o'clock, 4.04 now. So we didn't go to the museum, but we saw the, du the Duomo, we saw a bit of the castle. We'll see more of it later. I'll probably clip that footage back into this video. So you would have seen that by now. Anyways, we're taking the Metro. Should be coming pretty soon. About 25 minutes till we get back. And that's gonna be it for this one. After such a long day in the heat, uh, my mom and I decided we're just gonna go back to the Airbnb, relax in the air conditioning, and just, you know, do some editing, chill a little bit. So yeah, if you liked it, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that bell button, all that good stuff, like usual. I'll see you in the next one.